Until now, I really didn't have a problem with drinking whiskey out of a container that looks like this versus this. But what happens when a non-whiskey drinker like myself starts taking whiskey more seriously? Will I ever be able to tell the difference between a scotch or a bourbon or pull out those awesome aromas that all the sommeliers can out of a Glen Karen glass? But most importantly, out of 365 days, where will I rank the world's top whiskeys versus the lower ones? Let's find out as Short Guy Drinks Whiskey. Welcome back to Short Guy Drinks Whiskey. I'm Kimo and I apologize for the lateness of this video. We're going to be looking at an Irish whiskey and I really tried to get it out on St. Patrick's Day. But guess what? I finally purchased my first whiskey that comes with its own box. Now that's a pretty sweet box, but this is an even nicer bottle. Check it out there. Red Breast 12 year got the H statement right on there. Uh, this is an Irish whiskey, so you can bet that it's distilled in single pot copper stills. Uh, distilled three times for that extra smoothness, that last step in there. And these are aged 12 years, minimum 12 years, in sherry oak casks. So when we smell it, when we taste it, we should be able to taste that real deep fruit on there as I'm gently stroking this. <laughs> uh, originally came out in the mid-1800s by a company called Gilby. Uh, now owned by Irish distillers, the same guys that do Jameson, Green Dot, Yellow Dot, all those dots, and Middleton. This is actually distilled in the Middleton distillery down there, so uh, let's give it a quick taste. All right, let's uncork it. Nothing like the sound of a real wood cork there. Actually, if you look on the top here, you can see that there's a picture of the red breast. Uh, apparently, the chairman of the time really fancied the red breast, which is the European robin. And the unique thing about the red breast is it actually stays in colder weather when other birds are kind of flying to warmer weather. It decides to stay in Ireland to sing its song throughout the dark evenings of the winter in Ireland. So God bless the red breast. Let's get a pour going on. All right, let's get this pour going on here. I can tell you guys right now, ooh, a little bit more. I can smell the, those plums, those deep red notes in there from that uh, Oloroso or Sherry cask. European oak, it's definitely noticeable. Set that down here. And um, unlike the Glen Goyne 25 that I just did, that thing was brown. I mean, dark brown, tobacco brown, if you want to call it. This should be a lot lighter, a lot more livelier, a lot more friendly and smoother because you got the triple distillate in there, three times distilled. And when you're looking at it, you can see it's just more of a honey color. It's yellow. And it's just yelling at me, drink me because I'm only 40% ABV, 80% proof. I think this is going to be really good. I can smell it spilling over here. Yep, there's those deep red fruits. Perfect. A little bit of spiciness. Normally with that toasty wood, you get a little bit of cinnamon in there. And the cinnamon is more on the uh, the right side of the glass. As I come on over, I can smell a lot more fruits. <sighs> let, me, let me clear clear the nostrils here. Let me give it a quick, quick swirl. swirl. Let me get a second, second nosing. Yep. Definitely noticeable. Those plums in there. Right on the top, actually, another plums. Spices on the side, low alcohol, like I said. Let's give it a taste. I'm getting some toffee on there, and wow, it's really gripping down on the tongue. It's staying in there, it's long lasting, definitely more complex. And what I'm meaning by that is I'm comparing it to Jameson. So they're kind of owned by the same company. So if you were to compare Jameson to this Irish whiskey, of course, the cost is going to be more. But it's more complex, it's more meaty, it stays on the tongue a lot more. And there was a little bit of toffee or chocolate on there. Let's go in for a second taste. It's so low on alcohol, you can keep it in your mouth all day and really enjoy the flavors that are coming out of there. You're going to get the sherry cask taste, the deep fruits. And they're going to stay in your mouth for a long time. Now, now, if you're asking me, is it worth spending the $65 to $70 uh, versus, let's say, something like Jameson? Absolutely, because you're going to get a lot more long-lasting flavor um, in the Red Breast 12 than you are with the Jameson. Now, this comes in a 15 and a 21. The 21 is ridiculously uh, overpriced, I think. But, I mean, it is 21 years. Now, can you justify spending that extra money, which I think is like $200, $300, uh, versus a 65 to $70 red breast 12. I think you can keep it at the 12 and enjoy uh, the full experience of a red breast type of Irish whiskey. So if you're thinking about like if you're on the fence at like if you're at the store and you're looking at the shelf and you're like, mm, do I want to spend that much money? 
do it. You're not going to be disappointed. This is an absolute pleasure to drink. I want to give it one more. You know, some of the whiskeys you put in your mouth, you can't swirl it around because it tastes real, real weird. Oh, it's still there. Guys, you got to get Red Breast 12, if not the 15, but I don't think it's worth the extra money. We'll see when I get a hold of some. But if you guys are asking me, is the Red Breast 12 worth the $75 or $69 you're going to pay for it? Absolutely. So guys, that's the ending of this review. I hope you found it useful. If you haven't subscribed to Chemotherapy, please do. Share it as much as possible. Give me that thumbs up. Like it as much as possible. And remember, Okoli Maluna. Ooh, yeah. Oh,